Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course where in this second module we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. The previous video was about some basic vector operations such as vector addition, subtraction, dot product and cross product and we have also seen how we can calculate these things in python. And in today's video we are going to discuss about some of the advanced vector operations such as uh, scalar multiplication, element wise multiplication and so on. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So these are the four main vector operations that we will be discussing today. So the first one is scalar multiplication and the next one is element wise multiplication, vector projection and cosine similarity. So we are not going to discuss only about uh, these vector operations and how to calculate these but also how these are used exactly in deep learning so that we get a better intuition of how the whole deep learning and the neural network works. So let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to discuss is a scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication involves multiplying each element of a vector by a scalar. If V is a vector and C is a scalar, then CV is a vector where each element VI of V is multiplied by C. So this definition is like pretty simple and this is like kind of self-explanatory. So let's say that we have a vector of let's say that has three elements of one, two and three and then we have a scalar of uh, let's say three. So we multiply each of these elements one, two, three by the scalar three. So the result would be let's say 3 comma 6 comma 9 right so this is what a scalar multiplication is so this can be represented like this let's say v is a vector that has the values v1 v2 and, and v3 up to vn and c is the scalar so if we if you want to do a scalar multiplication we take the c multiply it with all the individual elements of uh, you know the vector v and we would get the result so if we kind of took an example right so let's say that the vector is 2 3 and 4 and c is equal to 5 and if we kind of put this in this particular formula so we have this c dot v which is 5 into 2 3 and 4 and the result is going to be 5 into 2 5 into 3 and 5 into 4 so it's 10 comma 15 comma 20 so what you are basically getting here is a vector in, in result right so when you do a dot product so the result is going to be a scalar but in the case of scalar multiplication you you are getting kind of a vector so when you multiply it with a scalar of phi it's nothing but you are kind of uh, extending that vector by that particular magnitude and if you do this minus 5 right that means you're extending the vector by the magnitude of phi but you're kind of converting the direction into the opposite direction so the negative symbol also plays a crucial role here so this is about scalar multiplication and now let's understand how this is used in deep learning so the first thing uh, uh, that is useful in deep learning is the learning rate adjustment and then we, uh, of course it's also used in this regularization part for ml as well as for deep learning as well so when we talk about this learning rate adjustment right so during the training process of neural network the updates to the weight of the model so we have like several updates that are involved in it right so all these updates to the weight of the model are scaled by a learning rate if you remember when we kind of build this model so we would uh, kind of give a learning rate as 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 or something like that so this learning rate is multiplied with the vector sorry with the weight vector in order to scale those things and this is how the training kind of happens and the weights are updated so this updation of weight so this is kind of uh, done by scaling the weight by this learning rate and this is also helpful in order to stabilize the learning and also reach optimal convergence by updating the weights regularly so this is where this concept of scalar multiplication used because the weights will be a vector and the learning rate will be a scalar like 0 0.001 as i said and then we have this regularization so we have this techniques like l2 regularization and this involves scaling the weights vector by a scalar so i mean when i say scaling the weight vector it's nothing but multiplying the scalar to that vector so that's what this scaling means so we multiply that in order to prevent overfitting by Kind of keeping these weights small so this is how this is used in this regularization so that the model doesn't end up poor fitting so these are some of the uh, you know applications of scalar multiplication and the next thing that we are going to discuss is element wise multiplication and the definition for this operation is uh, element wise multiplication of vectors refers to multiplying each element of one vector with the corresponding element of another vector to produce a new vector so this operation is also known as adamart product so this is uh, what this element wise multiplication is so let's say that you have two vectors right so one two three so these are the three elements of the first vector and then four five six so these are the other three elements of the second vector 
so you take each element and multiply it with the corresponding element of the next vector so if we take an example right so let's say that uh, we have these two vectors a is equal to 2 3 and 4 and b is equal to 1 2 and 3 and the elemental wise multiplication can be represented like this c is equal to a dot this circle thing a uh, b and this is calculated as let's say c is the resultant vector c1 is the first element of the resultant vector c2 is the second element c3 is the third element so first what we do is multiply this 2 with 1 and then multiply this 3 with 2 4 with this thing so maybe i can just put a pin and show it to you so we multiply this uh, 4 and 3 first or maybe again the order is not important so we multiply this 2 and 1 and this 3 the second element with the second element of the second vector 3 and 2 so this would form a new vector so this is what elemental uh, wise multiplication is so you have 2 and 1 which is represented here the first element 3 and 2 and 4 comma 3 so the result of this element wise multiplication is c which is equal to 2 6 and 12 which is again is also a vector <coughs> so this is how we can kind of do the element wise multiplication of two vectors and now let's see how this is used in the case of t planning so we have this activations right so we have this activation functions and also this gradients where we in in the optimization part we calculate this gradients in order to update the weights so there this uh, element wise multiplication is used and also in the in the case of feature maps in the cnn's convolutional neural network so, so if we f first discuss about this activations and gradients right so we have this activation functions like the relu rectified uh, linear units and this activation activations are kind of applied as a elemental wise to the output vector of neurons so we know that a, a, a neuron would give an output uh, after uh, some linear transformation or some transformation and to that we apply a non-linear activation functions like relu or leaky relu or something like that so this activation functions of relu are applied element wise to this output of the uh, neurons vector output and also during this uh, back propagation where the weights are updated so the gradients are computed and and kind of applied elemental wise as well so this is of this is useful in activations and gradients and then we have the second thing of feature maps in cnn's convolutional neural network so in the case of convolutional neural network this element wise multiplication is mainly used to apply filters to the feature uh, maps and this kind of helps in detecting the features so we would kind of assign a particular number of filters to a neuron and again this kind of uh, do this filtering filter maps thing and and again as i said this is used for detecting the features and all these are uh, you know based on this element wise multiplication so that's about this thing and the next thing that we are going to discuss is vector projection so vector projection is a mathematical operation that involves projecting one vector onto another so i can draw and show this to you how this would work so let's say that we have a vector so let's call this uh, I mean some vector and then we have another vector uh, let me write this again so let's say we have this vector and then we have another vector this is the second vector and uh, I want to know uh, when I project this vector, so let's call this as the second vector and this as the first vector. So when I project this vector onto this vector, what the resultant vector is going to be. So what you do is you can just draw a dotted line here and say this is the part where it meets. So this is the projection vector that we are getting. Let me call this as PR. Okay, so this is what projection of vector means and this also has some application. So let's maybe first take an example of this vector projection and then discuss like how this is used in deep learning so let's say that we have two vectors 2 comma 3 and b comma 1 and the formula for this vector projection is projection of uh, b on this a so a dot b divided by b square dot b so this is given as calculate first the dot product so this is the dot product i missed this d so this is the formula as i said so we have this b and a so first we have to calculate this a dot b dot product and this modulus of b is nothing but the magnitude of b vector and once you calculate that you have to square it and again you do this multiplication thing with b vector so the dot product is uh, we know that we have to do this elemental wise thing and add it right for dot product we have discussed in the previous video so you multiply this 2 and 1 and this 3 and 1 and you sum it so we have this 2 dot 1 plus 3 dot 1 which is equal to 5 and then you calculate this magnitude and square it so calculate the magnitude of b vector so calculating magnitude is pretty simple so here we have two values right so you square those values add it and do a square root of that so here it's one comma one 
so here you would square that first one square plus one square and you take a square root the resultant is square root of two and then you have to kind of square it uh, the square root will kind of go away so when you substitute all these things in the formula so you get 5 divided by a square root of 2 whole square dot 1 comma sorry 1 and 1 which is the b vector so this part is nothing but the b vector uh, and and then we know that the square and square root gets cancelled so we have 5 by 2 divided 5 by 2 into uh, 1 and 1 so now this becomes a scalar multiplication so you multiply this 5 comma 2 with this uh, 1 and 1 vector the b vector and the result you are going to get is 5 divided by 2 and 5 divided by 2 which is 2.5 and 2.5 so this is <clears throat> what the projection of uh, vector is and and the use of this projection of vector in deep learning is dimensionality reduction and also in the case of feature extraction so this mainly helps to reduce the dimensionality of the data so if you uh, kind of already learned about in a machine learning course so we have this pca which stands for principal component analysis where this is vector projection is used to project data onto a lower dimension and kind of this reduces the data that we have to process it's, it basically uh, takes the vector in a higher dimension projects it to a vector of lower dimension so that we are now reducing the dimension of the vector itself so this is where this projection is used again it's also used in the case of feature extraction so in deep learning right uh, by projecting this i dimensional data onto this lower dimensional data of vectors this important features can be extracted this is again similar to the concept of dimensional uh, reduction dimensionality reduction so these these are the things where this can be used and sometimes it's also used in the case of finding the the similarities of vectors too so that's about the vector projection and finally we have this cosine similarity which is also like uh, as a lot of use in it so cosine similarity is a measure used to determine how similar two vectors are in a multi-dimensional space particularly in the context of text mining and information retrieval so we have this cosine similarity as i said so it's basically when you have two vectors this cosine similarity would give you uh, how similar the two vectors are and again as i said this is helpful in text mining and information retrieval so now the concept of rag is widely used right retrieval augmented generation so then what we would do is we would convert the entire document text into uh, vector embeddings and also the question that we ask from the document is also kind of converted into a vector embedding and we put these two things together try to find the you know closer vector so you have this question vector and the knowledge vector or the document vector so you find the vectors that are like closer to this and give that as the information or the answer for the question so this is one application where cosine similarity is kind of used so the all those things that you need to remember about this is it's used to find similar vectors and it how this works is it calculates the cosine of the angle between two vectors so when you have two vectors you can find the angle between these two and you take cosine of that angle which is the measure of their orientation relative to each other in simple terms simpler terms it quantifies the similarity of direction between the two vectors rather than the magnitude so when you have two vectors the magnitude of the two vectors are not important but how they are oriented is uh, important so if both of these vectors are oriented in the same direction so we can say that these two vectors are kind of like related to each other or they are like similar to each other so the formula in order to calculate this cosine similarity is when you have two vectors of a and b so we first calculate the dot product of a dot b which would give you a scalar and then we have this modulus of a and modulus of b which is magnitude of a vector into mod magnitude of b vector so finally you would get a score so that score is called a cosine similarity score so let's say that we have two vectors vector a and vector b and vector a contains values 3 one two zero and four and let's say that these things represent the frequencies of words in document a so let's say that we have two documents and uh we represent this we can do this with this tf idf vectorizer and count vectorizer kind of things so we represent frequencies how frequent these words kind of uh, repeated in the document and those frequencies of words are let's say represented by these values of these vectors and this is for the second document so now you can substitute these values in this formula and get the result so when you do this dot product so we multiply 3 and 2 1 and 1 2 4 and 7 and add all these results the final value that you are going to get is 27 and then calculate the magnitude of a as i said you have to square each individual values and then add it and take a square root so 3 square plus 1 square and so on the result is square root of 30 which is approximately equal to 5.48 and then uh, magnitude of b which is again equal to 5.57 and you divide this 27 by the product of these two things and the result that you are going to get is 27 divided by 
5.48 into 5.57 the result is 0 0.918 so uh, the value range between 0 and 1 if the cosine similarity score is 1 that means the two vectors are like very close to each other if the value is small that means like they are like far from each other and like they are pretty different in this concept of cosine similarity can be used in text and document similarity as we have just now discussed and this is also can be used in recommendation systems to you can represent the data points in the vector uh, format and you can find the similarity so i've already done a video on this movie recommendation system so there also we kind of do this vector conversion and, and calculate this cosine similarity to kind of recommend a movie to the user if they say that this is the movie that i like so it's for example if they say that they like avengers in game movie we are going to suggest them other uh, you know superhero related movies or action movies by using this cosine similarity and also this is used in the case of semantic similarity and this is another very important application in nlp semantic similarity is, is it's all about not just picking the similar vector by, by words but by picking it by semantic knowledge semantic is nothing but the meaning of those words so you're not going to kind of look at the words and send out exact words but try to find the answer to a question or similar text by the meaning that it kind of gives you so that's uh, the application of cosine similarity with deep learning so i hope everyone is clear until this point and uh, in the next video let's try to do all these four vector operations in python and get a better understanding of this so that's it for my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching